watching AYV Television. Voters in the Koinadugu district of Sierra Leone went to the polls last Saturday to elect their district council chairman as well as a local councillor for Ward 155. But after two days um, of voting, the results of the elections were nowhere in sight after the country's electoral body, the National Electoral Commission, NEC, stopped counting the ballot in response to queries by both the ruling SLPP and the main opposition APC at the local tallying center. According to a press statement published by NEC, counting of votes was to be moved to the NEC data center in Wellington in Freetown. Both the SLPP and the APC claimed victory in what many observers believe to have been a close race in a district traditionally regarded as an opposition APC stronghold, prompting the APC to issue a statement accusing the SLPP of trying to steal their votes. Following the announcement of results by NEC declaring Lawrence Tete Kabo of the All People's Congress chairperson of the Koinadugu District Council and Kali Foronka of the Sierra Leone People's Party Councillor of Ward 115. The APC has challenged the results and some of the election processes, saying the party will take neck to court for elections fraud. My name is Samuel Weisbangre, and this is AYV on Sunday. Good evening and welcome to AYV on Sunday on Channel 33 on TV and on Radio FM 101.7. Today we're talking about the, um, the Koinadugu election and the aftermath of it, what went on during the processes. And um, as always, you can be part of the conversation. But let me welcome the two guests who are in the studio at the moment. Um, the chairperson for National Elections Watch, uh, Marcella Samba. Good evening and welcome to the show. Good evening, Samuel, and thanks for having me. Right, and um, Christopher Jones, who is the Acting Director of Communications and Media at the National Electoral Commission. Christopher, good evening and welcome to the show. Good evening, Samuel Wise. Thank you for bringing me here. Right, we await the arrival of Dr. Richard Conte from the All People's Congress Party and Lieutenant Lahai Lawrence Lima from the Salian People's Party. But to you watching or listening, remember you can always contribute to the program by commenting on our Africa Young Voices Media Empire Facebook page. Alternatively, you can phone in when we open the call line later on. And the number to do so is plus 232 Plus 232 I'm going to start off with um, a press conference that was held by the National Elections Watch, where findings were made known to um, the people of Sierra Leone. The National Elections Watch knew has given um, the Sierra Leone police an ultimatum of 48 hours to return phones of observers allegedly seized by security forces, I mean, during the Koinadugu district and um, chairman and council elections. Um, Marcella, who is here, made the call um, during a gathering organized by CSOs and other stakeholders to report their findings on the elections described as violent and full of inconsistencies. Let's join Sally Fuchel on the camera. The just concluded chairman and council by elections in Koenadugu districts were stained with allegations of fraud and violence. The theme of news reports to the wider civil society is election violence must stop, which describes the by-election, the worst in the history of Sierra Leone. Chairperson for the election monitoring body clarified that the National Election Watch is mandated to monitor electoral process for free, fair, and credible elections, not to observe violence. She continued to say that with what was seen in the by-election, the country's democracy is under attack. Don't collect 
observers phones at the polling station. And I want this to go to the Sierra Leone police that we are giving them 48 hours to give our observers phones. Or if they fail to do that, we are going to escalate. We are members of the West African Elections Observer Network. We are members of AFCONET, the Africa Elections Observer Network, and we are members of GENDEM, the Global Elections Observer Network. If our observers' phones are not to be turned in the next 48 hours, we're going to escalate to our network members because we cannot accept that observers can be attacked at polling station. It does not happen anywhere in the world. Anywhere. This is unprecedented and we want to condemn it in the strongest possible terms. Presenting the findings, Project Officer National Election Watch said the election day was marred with high level of violence as he claimed that some were even perpetrated by government ministers. At the RC school, a driver with a, a CRV, green colored CRV, drove ferociously into the precinct of the, the, the elections. And so even when police were stopping him, he could not stop. Thugs were moving on top of bikes. There were notorious eight bikes of three passengers each of those eight bikes. I saw them myself at Sakuta. Sakuta is a village um, about nine miles off from Bafudia. They were there accelerating their bikes at a very high speed while stationed in one place, causing noise. That caused voters that, were, that had come in to the prison to vote, they also stood by, could not access the voting center because they were afraid. According to a member of the Strategic Management Committee for NEW, lack of security moved the Talane process from Koinadugu to Freetown. She noted that NEC promised to address all alleged discrepancies a promise she says was not fulfilled. ABC reported that they have 82 votes, SLPP 49. NEP cross checked their RF form, and it was very clear that SLPP had 49. But sadly enough, the figure that NEP entered into the, 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 the system for SLPP was 149. The APC appealed to NEC to correct this discrepancy. <coughs> NEC went ahead to read the provisional result. Commissioner Edmond Alpha told the APC that they will go ahead to read the provisional result, and if they have any problems, they can take it further. The chairperson of NEW concluded by condemning an alleged assault of one physically challenged APC pulling agent who had no police protection. Salivu Jarna Kamara, AYV News in Freetown. Interesting. Um, and I, I, would, I would want to start off with you, Marcella, asking your question, especially describing what happened there, especially the attack on observers by, I mean, people who are described as dogs. I mean, um, they took phones of observers and things like that. What does that present for modern day democracy? You see, um, I wish the two representatives mm. who we are also supposed to be on this program were here already. Right. And so they should have been in a better position to answer that question. Because the meaning of elections have been eroded. Elections, democracy, and good governance is not about two political parties fighting. And I want to correct the report. The phones were not taken by the police, they were taken by thugs on the instruction of a party agent. Mm. Our observers, whenever they are in the polling station, our role is to observe, record, and report. And so, when in that particular polling station, the thugs went to the polling station and they want to destroy the evidence. They collected the phones from them, and equally so, they took and cut it away with the observation materials, the mm. checklist and the documents they had for observation. Right. And that's why we're saying that we are giving 48 hours. The 48 hours will elapse tonight for the police to take action to retrieve the phones of the observers and return it to them. 
I want to make this clear to the citizen of Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. and equally so this is a, an international platform, a number of people are watching. Right. Um, the, 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 the quest for democratization is an international process. It's not just limited to Sierra Leone. So you find out that there are prescribed standards as to how democracy is run or elections are run in different countries. There are prescribed standards. And in all of this, we need to understand that elections are about citizens. Mm. When you go to the polling station, the citizen is the boss. That is where we decide who we are going to hand over the social contract to. We are going to give assignments to who should lead us for the next four years, the next five years, or in the case of by-elections, right. intermittently. So this is how it works. In the polling station, Politicians have, in fact, no business in the polling station. But in the advent of um, recent democratization in the 90s, it comes with concepts of transparency, concepts of participation, and concepts of inclusion. So politicians are given the opportunity, contesting parties, to present what they call party agents, and in some countries they call them party observers. To right. be clear as to what their role is. Mm. I mean, that presupposes that they cannot interfere with the democratic process. But in the spirit of transparency and fairness, parties can send in, you know what we normally say in the mm -hmm. local parlance, fall whitey white. Yes, so yes. they go down at the polling station and see exactly, because voting and counting starts at the polling station right. and ends at the polling station. Mm. So when, when the, 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 the neck official, in different contexts, they give in different names, we mm -hmm. call them presiding officer, the boss of the station. Right. The, the presiding officer would empty the ballot box to show that there's nothing inside. So the party officials who are actually present, trans that's why the boxes that are used are transparent, they would see that there are no voting materials in the box, right. and then they would do all the opening procedures the, in the presence of this party observers. So mm -hmm. that's why they are there. Because we, as I did say, the concept of transparency has been factored in. Right. So that in the final analysis, these politicians who represent their parties would be magnanimous enough to say, I was at the polling station, I saw what transpired, and honorably we lost the elections. Right. That's what it is. All right. Let, let me welcome um, Dr. Richard Conte from the All People's Congress Party. Good evening and welcome to the show. Good evening, Samuel. It's a pleasure oh. being here. All right. Let me, let, let, let me, let me go straight to um, the All People's Congress, of course, has demanded... Um, 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 be, be, as demanded for an immediate um, um, release of basically the results and next should ask and the, the party is threatening to go to court and especially when they put out a statement saying um, they would not they would resist every attempt uh, by SLPP to steal their votes in the Koinadugu um, election Let, let's let's go to the press conference they called and then we'll would come to um, to, to, to our guests in the studio. Accusations of election fraud are not uncommon during local and national voting processes. The most recent is the Koinadugu District Council by election, in which the National Electoral Commission, NEC, announced SLPP as winner. A press release dated 6th October 2021 read and signed today, 7th October, by the National Secretary General, Ambassador Alhaji Usman Fode Yansane, accuses neck of meddling with the result at Station 1 at the MCA Primary School in Fumbakoro with multiple fraudulent activities in favor of the ruling party during Tale process for the council election at Ward 155. The correct score which were 049 for SLPP and 083 for APC for that station, signed by net officials, polling agents, and observers, including the SLPP agent, were fraudulently entered by a next staff as 
149 instead of 049 for the SLPP, leaving the APC board the same, that is 083. This was what criminally inflated the SLPP candidates' vote by an extra 100 and fraudulently affected the final outcome of the by election for councillor for Ward 155. Ambassador Yansane stated that even with the indications of result tampering coupled up with official objections submitted to NEC by the party, the electoral body ignored all evidences provided and announced the result in favor of SLPP. We therefore demand an immediate recount of the vote for 155 based on the next certified RRF form be conducted with a view to making sure that they reflect the will of the Koinadubu electorate identify and take appropriate actions against the next officials involved in the perpetration of electoral fraud and getting the National Electoral Commission to respect the law and best international electoral practices. The APC will utilize all legal and reasonable means at our disposal to continue to seek regress. In the last three years, the president set during by-elections, for instance, Constituency 110, Tonko Limba, among others, put in question the credibility of NEC ahead of the 2023 general elections. Salifujarna Kamara, AYV News in Freetown. All right, uh, many thanks to Salifujarna Kamara for that um, report. Um, tonight, NEC, NEC appears to be the defender, so let's allow the attackers to do, to do the attacking. <laughs> Let's um, me quickly just bring in Dr. Richard Conte. Um, that's, that's the position of um, your party. Um, your party believes that some um, figures were changed in favor of the ruling SLPP, and you, you got figures that they were not, of course, they were not part of the entire process, so figures were manufactured, and as a result, even the, the, the winning that NEC declared for the SLPP, the, Councillor, um, the word 155, the, the, the winner declared by NEC is not um, deserving of the victory. So, and you are threatening to go to court. And just so for our viewers, I also spoke to a very senior member of the SLPP. Interestingly, the SLPP said it is also preparing to go to court. But that's when we have the rep here, we'll would go to that. So let's um, go quickly to, to what. Uh, led to the APC making that decision and believing that um, you were robbed of um, fig, um, that particular election. Thank you very much, Samuel. I want, uh, first of all, to people to understand the way this Stalin process mm. is done. You know, um, I met Marcella explaining about how counting is done and how elections start at the polling station. Yes, indeed, people vote at the polling station, the counting is done at the polling station, and the results of the counting are recorded at the polling station. Mm -hmm. It is also at the polling station that the reconciliation is done. What that means, therefore, is that it's at the polling station that they determine how many ballot papers were issued, how many were used, mm -hmm. how many were not used, etc., etc. Then they determine the results for each of the candidates mm. in the election and then the number of void votes. All of those things have to tally. That is why they call that form the results and reconciliation form. At the end of the process, what is done is that the NEC officials, the, can the polling agents and the observers append their signatures to that document certifying at that level mm. the outcome of the results. If they are all satisfied, they would all sign. That result, which is the RR form, is then placed in an envelope. They call it a tampered envelope. I don't know how they call it a tampered envelope. And it is sealed. And it will only be reopened at the tally center. But this RR form is in multiple copies.
Mm. So what NEC does is that the district elections manager gets a copy. NEC, I believe regional or national, gets a copy, which is the original. A, co a copy goes to the district. A copy goes to each of the polling agents. And a copy is displayed at the polling station, which means every organized political party has the privilege of receiving through its agents a copy of the results. Mm. So which means if the party is so well organized and structured, if they receive all of the RR forms, the party can on its own collate the results and get for itself whatever for itself at a provisional mm. result. In other contexts, you can say exit polls, okay, which would have to be certified eventually by the official results as announced by NEC. Mm. But these exit polls usually are an indication as to how a party is performing or not performing. Mm. So in this specific case of the councillorship election in Ward 115 in constituency 046, there are only 15 stations, 15 stations. And uh, the good thing about it is that when they are entering them and the results are being beamed on the screen, it's easily possible to see all of the 15 stations, stations displayed at the same time on the screen. Mm. So as these results were being displayed, the APC kept close watch on how this process was going on. Interestingly, the last entry that they made was the entry for Fumbakoro mm. MCA Primary School Station 1. In this station, according to the RR form, which was given to Ross by NEC, mm -hmm. APC scored 83 votes and SLPP had 49 votes. So what we expected therefore to see on the screen was, was 83 votes for APC and 49 votes mm. for SLPP. Unfortunately, what we saw on the screen was 83 votes for APC and 149 votes for SLPP. We raised objection. We presented our RR forms and requested that they produce their own original of the result for that center so that we, we can compare. Funnily, because I, I would say funnily, instead of producing that exact RR form for us, they produce for us the results, originals of another station, mm. as if to the confuse neck. us. Yes, next year you find so. Okay, we insisted that what we are asking for was that one. The commissioner then said, if we are not satisfied, let us write to the commission. And the commissioner will do this, but I, but I said he is going ahead to announce the results as is. Mm. And what is worrisome for us is that, you know, during the earlier tally process in Medina, sorry, in Cam, you know, I, I'm thinking of Tonko Limba, mm. in Cambia. So in Kabbalah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, go no, ahead. I, I'm still haunted by Tom Go ahead. During the real process in Kabbalah, yeah. we had a similar experience where the assistant operations, uh, director of operations for the North, Mr. Paul Damba, was caught tampering with the results in a similar way. He changed the results for Alcalia Station 1 from 69 for the SLPP to 169 for the SLPP mm. and left our own score of 101 unchanged. In that case, APC objected and 
they brought out the original script, and it was confirmed there that this Mr. Banda, Mr. Damba, actually took TPEX and changed the zero. He TPEX the zero and wrote one. And then, as if that's not bad enough, he went further to initial it. Then the commissioner asked him, said, well, why did you do this? Mm -hmm. So at that point, we asked that he can no longer be allowed to continue with the process. So it was and changed. It, it was changed. We also discovered that in the same Alcalia MCA primary school, the, all the station three, APC had 122 votes. SLPP had 83. SLPP had uh, uh, 88 votes. Mm -hmm. But when they entered the results, they entered 88 for APC and 122 for SLPP. Again, we objected. We objected to two others. You know, the way the entries are done, because at, at, at by, that, by that time, they had entered a little over 100 uh, pulling stations, which means we are like one third into the process. And you will not be able to see all the entries. So it's basically just the 15 or so or 20 that can appear on the screen that you can see at any point in time. Mm -hmm. So just through scrolling up and down, we're able to pick on these four, and we raised objections. And the, the NEC commissioner was trying to look into all of these things in addition to the ones that we had already established. Because we had already established the 169 issue. Mm -hmm. We had already established the 88, 122 issue. We had, he had just received the other two RR forms from us to be able to check on them when these guys came and disrupted the process. Mm -hmm. See, what is worrisome? You know, we thought that what happened in Kabala was an isolated case. And maybe Paul Damba was the bad guy. So we thought that by removing Paul Damba, the issue is addressed. Regrettably, we have now established that this type of corruption is institutionalized. I'll come to because that. Because mm -hmm. even when Paul Damba was removed, when we came to Freetown, the new guys that came in repeated the same thing. The reason why I say it's your life is because mm -hmm. if, when you are doing the entry, you are given the RR from the original. They have it. Mm. So if you see the figure your colleague has entered is different from the figure on your original RR form, you should say, uh-uh. If you, you have integrity, you should check it. All right. But this is not happening. So that is very worrisome to say that net I'll officials can alter I'll co we'll come to look at that at um, the institutional level. Marcella, let me ask you, I mean, these concerns being raised by the APC, um, you've presented your, your findings. Take us through, are they something you, I mean, that you, you saw? I know, for example, the, the, the change in figures and all of that, that's something you highlighted and attempts were made to, and re replacement was also done. So take us through your findings. Just as I did, as I did say, yeah. the people who would be in a better place to answer that question because they should they should answer to the citizens of Sierra Leone. Mm. The, 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 the political party should be asked why is it that such level, you know, of violence, attempted fraud, mm -hmm. an allegation was exhibited in the Koinadugu elections. And probably we need to also bring to the notice of the citizens that Elections have its own parameters. Right. So if leaders cannot put forward a robust campaign, what, why, instead of organizing a campaign, they were organizing Togri. Mm -hmm. So for example, the findings of National Elections Watch shows a systematic attack mm -hmm. on democracy. You find out that there were thugs moving on bikes. Right. Three to a bike, eight bikes roaming the township, and it was that same set of bike that people saw going to the station, to the center where 
ballot uh, um, box and materials were burned. Mm -hmm. We saw situations where government ministers were also involved mm -hmm. in fracas in a polling station. We equally saw a situation where a disabled agent was beaten. You know why we're bringing up all these issues? That's why I laid the parameters at the start. That after all the issues that are happening in Africa, around violent armed conflict, around military dictatorship, around protracted one-party regime, African leaders came together and, and civil society and other, you know, uh, 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 um, moral guarantors. Mm -hmm. They came together to push Africa to a system of democratization. And one that would mean effective participation of different groups of people. One that would mean accountability and transparency. And one that would mean institutions of the state having the integrity to man processes. But one thing I need to mention, mm -hmm. you find out that we have a situation where you cannot distinguish political parties and the government. Mm. By now, we should be complaining to the government of Sierra Leone to take action because there are huge allegations against the National Electoral Commission for which, in instances, national elections were witnessed. We were at the Tally Center. There were huge allegations, and National Electoral Commission was seek to clear its image immediately. Mm. And unfortunately, the very government we should be complaining to now, government officials were embroiled in what we are talking about. And in fact, at the Tally Center in Wellington, one of the people who we are representing the Sierra Leone People's Party was also a minister, a deputy minister of state. So you see, we can, the conflation, we are tied up in this conflation, and mm. it's very difficult to get them to understand the enormity of the challenge that we are faced with. And so it is important that with immediate effect, entities, institutions that are responsible for the state action, like the other by-elections post-2018, where the police had not taken action against those who actually destroyed sensitive voter materials, this one is going to be a difference. And we are going to ensure that all those who have been named in the Koinadugu incident be brought to book and a thorough investigation be done. Because if we think that we want to see this and it becomes a permanent future in our democracy, it's difficult. Because democracy is not about APC and SLPP, no. Democracy is not just about political parties. It is about how political parties bring forth initiatives that would better the lives of citizens. So if the whole idea of political participation is about fighting, let the political parties go to the stadium and let them fight there, <laughs> not at the polling station. All right. So it is very important mm -hmm. that the police investigates all these allegations. That, you know, it's, it's since, uh, um, when was it? Was it Thursday? No, Tuesday. Mm. To say that the results were, were announced and all the events of the weekend, we have not seen a single statement from the Sierra Leone police. Ballot materials were burnt, people were beaten, sealed boxes of ballot papers that, were does cut that, does away. Does that worry you? Pardon? Does that worry you? It goes beyond worry. I don't even want to discuss this issue. Since Save for the press conference we have as mm -hmm. the chairperson of the National Elections Watch. I have to come to the public and make a statement. Right. I don't want to discuss these issues. I don't want to discuss APC and SLPP fighting in police station. No. Democracy is beyond that. It's made of standard stuff. Not about people fighting for spaces and people going to police station to misbehave. All right. I think as leaders, they must do better. Let me bring in Christopher Jones now. Yes. Um, you've listened to the two submissions from both um, Marcella and um, Dr. Conte. Yes. And um, you, you, you happen to be 
I mean, in, in the midst of all of the, the troubles, where you have people who, I mean, f neck officials who are supposed to be, um, to, to be um, neutral or objective, they are being accused of playing politics, siding one party against the other. So to take us first um, through the processes, um, starting from um, voting to tallying of results. Right, thank you. NEC is a credible institution. We have integrity. Mm. We are professionals and we maintain that. You go to the pools for Adugu, 84,293 registered voters. Mm -hmm. We are expected to go to the pools. Pools open at 7 o'clock. You check your name, they give you a ballot paper. You go behind the scene, you mark the ballot, you put it into the ballot box. At 5 p.m., votes are counted. Before we do anything, we empty the box to show you that there is nothing inside the box. But one important thing, the document that they are using is called RRF, Results Reconciliation Form. Mm -hmm. If you are given five ballot papers before the starting of the opening of the polls, did you give any, did you take any, has taken into consideration? How many did you use? Any spoilt? How many find you will find in the box? That have to match up. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't match, it is the usual train that should be corrected. After that process has been done, result from the RF copies are made, clear copy, white copy, are sent to the tally center, to the DC center. Political parties are giving copies. Copies are pasted up on the wall of the, each police station. Mm -hmm. Then we go to the tally center. The tally center, it's a process. The system is set up in such a way that if the figures are not reconciled, it won't go through the, the system. It won't. So as usual, the district, office, the district, the assistant directors of the operations will try to reconcile. And that's exactly what the, our neck officer was doing when he breached procedure. When he breached procedure, instead of reconciling at the bottom, he reconciled at the top. And when the issue came up, because we, are, we have integrity, the commissioner in charge, Commissioner Edmund Sylvester Alpha, look at it and call a quick meeting and realize that that was a breach of the procedure. So what did NEC do? NEC asked that staff. When you say breach of, uh, forgive me, when you say breach of procedure, what exactly did you mean? It means there are procedures, if you want to re reconcile, there are procedures, you reconcile, ballot received, mm -hmm. valid, invalid, but you do not tamper with vote cast. Go ahead. Right. So the commissioner asks the next staff to stand aside. That's a plus on our path. And for us to show that the next did not do it intentionally, it's not criminal, he penned down a signature against what he changed. And openly at the Koinadugu Tally Center, he explained it. He owned up to the responsibility, but nevertheless. So when you... Um so he, he, he appended his signature to the figures he changed, yes. which was not criminal. No, so it was not criminal. Up, so the figures were correct? No, okay. no. When you append your signature, you are owning up. Mm. But you, you say it was not criminal. I mean, so the figures were not changed. No, listen, listen, listen to my point. Don't, don't put words into my mouth. Don't listen to what I'm Go telling ahead. you. Go ahead. Because you have taken up the responsibility, you do change, mm -hmm. you tend to reconcile from six to eight. Mm -hmm. I did it. Because I did it, I pen out my signature. Oh, you know that I did it. Mm -hmm. And I come out openly. I could have done it without writing my name, without pen out my signature on it. Right. So if you have done it without writing your signature on it, it is criminal. But you own up your signature, you pen out your signature on it. Say that I did it. That's not criminal. That's not criminal. Right. It's breach of procedure. Right. Because it's a breach of procedure, the, the commissioner in charge asked him to stand aside. Mm. We further went on to Wellington National Data Center. We look at the RF. What we see at the RF was what was inputted to the Italy Center. And then we checked at the bottom to see if it is, if, if it, if it is if it, if it reconciled. If you change at the bottom, if you have ever seen the, the reconciliation mm -hmm. form, for one party to another party, the number of valid votes found in the box should be the same with the number of valid votes put for APC, casted for SAPP. If it doesn't work, then you know something is wrong. 
But as we have said, it's mere allegation. What has the commission done so far as I'm speaking? The commission has set up a committee to look into the complaint. We have got letters from APC. We have got letters from SABP. We are setting up a committee to look into the, all the allegations, the queries. And we are going to come out to the public to tell the public the outcome of our investigation. If anyone is found wanting that you did something intentionally, obviously, you feel the wrath of the commission. Mm -hmm. But the commission has integrity, unlike what Doc said. We have integrity and we are professionals. And we are Sierra Leoneans. We are also going to investigate the quality of staff used for that election. That's my explanation so far. On the All right. Just, just out of curiosity, I'm still going to take you back. Um, if I have stolen this water and yes. I have confessed yeah. that I, does that still not make me a criminal? No, you confessed. Yes. But there is not stealing of water. It is you have to reconcile. The first point I explained to you: yeah. reconciliation. Which in this case, he breached the procedure by changing figures, according to the explanation. He, he breached the procedure. He should have changed at the bottom for valid and invalid mm. and vote cast, mm. not for changing of figures for each candidate. To favor any candidate. To favor so any that was candidate. not the case. That was not the case. Right. So because you, you fail to do that, mm -hmm. you are breaching the procedure of reconciliation. It's clear now. It's clear now. Thank you. Thank you. So, so I'm going to you back, Dr. Conte. So where did you get that? I mean, that the figures changed was in favor of one political party. When Nick is saying, that's not the case. I oh. mean, it, it was just a mistake. What I should have put um, in this particular category, I, have, I mean, I put it in, in, in another category, and that was the breach. So why, why, why the crime? That is not the case. Let me give you an example here. I have here for center code 06101, MCA Primary School, Fumbakoro. Mm -hmm. That is for the councillorship election. Here is the RR form. Please read out, based on this RR form, the score for APC and the score for SLPP. All right, I just hope it's, it's what NEC gave. <laughs> All right, we have um, here for um, a total number of votes for candidates, 132. Um, total number of um, invalid votes, 11. Total number of um, ballots, JKL143. And um, see, um, um, I can't quite um, recall, um, go through this. Record of um, discrepancy, um, zero, zero. That's what I'm seeing here. No, I said just read what? here the scores for each party. The APC, pa the APC and SLPP yes, score. The scores are there. Mm -hmm. All right, you have um, 83 and 49. APC. 83, SLPP, 49. Good. Now, come down here. Hmm. <laughs> Look, this is the tally sheet. Right. This is the score for the same Fumbakoro. Hmm. From the bottom, the second score from the bottom. What are the scores there for APC and for SLPP? We have... Um, Look at the arrow. 149 and 83. Good. So, my good friend here is telling me mm. that changing a figure from 49 to 149 is not criminal. That is not my explanation. That it is only a reconciliation. Yes, Marcella, would have, you That's not my explanation, Doc. Okay, let, let, let me allow, uh, Doc, let me allow Marcella to come in, I mean. You see, I never, I, I had wanted the, the National Electoral Commission to do the needful, to come out to the public and clear its name. Mm. Because every institution has the responsibility to lean and build on its own credibility. And we must give them the chance to do this. Right. Now, if we are in public and saying things that are incorrect, we are actually undermining the very essence of why we decided as a people that the best way to settle our scores is to go democratic and have elections. Mm. It was clear at the Tale Center in Koinadugu, mm. in Kabbalah, that there were discrepancies. That was where the discrepancies started, with the 69 and 169. And what we saw initially when we got the reports, mm -hmm. granted, figures, humans can make L. 
it is understandable right. that humans can make error. So we were thinking, and we have never son, um, seen this, it's unprecedented. So we were thinking when we got the report that, okay, maybe it's a mistake. Mm -hmm. And we felt very pleased that immediately the credibility of this next staff has come on the question, make us this man to step out. Right. Because it doesn't even have the standing again to actually handle such sensitive information, whether it was by mistake or disorientation or by design. So asking him to step out for somebody else to carry on with the total in process was very good. But unfortunately, when, I mean, that's where the, the tension arises. Both sides could not be able to stabilize, and unfortunately, the police cannot provide the necessary security for those who are doing the total in to continue with the process. So the next team had to move out of Kabbalah, and they came to Freetown. And when they came let me, to Freetown... Let me ask you this question before we, we come to Freetown. Let me ask this question. What... Um, Christopher is saying that, that, yes, there was a change in figure, but it was not to, to help one candidate against the other. So the, um, the, the, the neck person was not helping the SLPP. Yeah. It was a mistake. And then, of course, he appended his signature that, yes, I did this. It was a mistake. Um, what should have been in this um, A category is what I have put in B category. You see, when I started and took my time to explain to the public that voting, counting, and reconciliation starts and end at the polling station, I never wanted to, to just be talking. Mm. It was for people to understand that when you get to the total in center, which we call Sally Center in yes, Sierra yeah. Leone. It's only to take station one, station two in center code. This, you, 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 you cumulatively and have a figure. Mm. You add up all the figures and make sure that you input them and have the figures. Mm. You mm. are not going to that total in center because you're going, you have a result sheet already. You are not going to the center to change figures. You are not going there to change figures. So it's very important, please. People need to understand. Yes. Are you saying that is where the counting is done? No. But let me tell you. The system, the Italian system, the process is set by default. If they fail to reconcile, Doc knows that. It is done for every election. That's why we are also going to investigate the quality of police staff we, 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 we recruited. If you fail to reconcile, it will not go through the system. It will get no, stuck. That's, that's so because, be, so because, because that should not, should not happen, that's the point. You have to sit down. Doc Absolutely. was there. I'm, I'm coming, Master. Let me clear this point for the viewers to understand. You have to sit down and check it out. And once that is clear, before it goes through the system. So that was exactly what the happened. The system you have, I, does, wait, just, wait, I, I was talking and I know then quickly, just, I just, want, just out of curiosity, the system you have, yes. does it reject... Um, a faulty figure? Should I, I mean, if I should put it that way. No, not a faulty figure. What does but it reject? The first word for the RF is reconciliation. Mm. Okay, if I you give you, to I give you, at, if you fail to reconcile, the system rejects. It rejects, it will go through. It will, it will never, so at this it will never go through. Yes. At the, at, say, at the total in center, yes. the point is not about counting any longer. Right? Mm -hmm. Making sure the figures align is fine. Yes. Because, I mean, that's understandable Fair enough. because for example yeah. if there were 300 voters um, in the station yeah. 100 actually voted we must see the thread okay. we must see the thread right through okay. it's, mm -hmm. it's like accounting mm -hmm. so tell us we issued 300 papers mm -hmm. only 100 voted and this amount we are returned mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. very clear okay. the person who is handling that information and that's my point has no business putting 100 in front of a mm. figure. And yeah. Mr. Jones, you cannot argue that out. And that is why I want us to get from the National Electoral Commission. Why? Because initially, as I did say, we were worried why somebody could add this 100 to get this discrepancy. Mm -hmm. But then we find out that it's repeating itself. And it's just 100 because the, it was three digits they were working with. Mm -hmm. So you see 083, 049, 
And so this zero automatically turns into one. Mm. And definitely there would be discrepancies. What are you saying about reconciliation? The figures would not add up. Yeah. It would definitely not add up. So if you're saying it is not it, that is it. It would not add up. Because every single ballot has to be accounted for, every single vote has to be accounted for. Mm -hmm. If these votes, nobody voted for those, uh, um, they are blank ballots, they will come in as blank ballots. And that's the reconciliation point. That is why next should clear why is it that this man was adding this 100 votes. Mm. And I think we need not throw that under the carpet because that helps for all of us to be on the same page. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, unfortunately, of the 17 political parties, only two of them contested. So it's as if it's a fight between APC and SLP. Right. But this is not that. It is about the principles of electoral processes and justice. That mm. is it. How institutions charged with the responsibility can deliver and be clear to us, explain to us. Now we have this discrepancy. If one person, that's the will of the people. The people have gone to the polling station and given their votes. Right? If one person in the total in center can add 100, then we are worried. Mm. That is where we are. Yes. And let me continue. You know, Mr. Jones should just be benevolent to the truth here. He's talking about reconciliation. Right. And I'm sure you acknowledge that I know what we're talking about. Yes, indeed. Sometimes our pulling staff do make mistakes and the figures don't reconcile. But that does not include changing the votes of the individual contestants. That you cannot change the votes of the individual consultants mm. in a bid to reconcile, you don't. Let me take you back to this RR form. You know, uh, that's why I came with it. APC had 83, SLPP had 49, the total number of votes mm -hmm. both parties scored was 132. If you add 100 to SLPP, that will change to 232. If the total number and then the void votes was 11, mm -hmm. making it 143. But if you add 100 to SLPP, it becomes 243. But if you come up here for reconciliation, 300 ballot uh, uh, papers were issued. 143 uh, we are, we, ba ballots were used. Mm. 143. 132 to APC and SLPP and then 11 void. Where did you manufacture the 100 from? It is electoral fraud. Mm. And it is electoral fraud. They changed the figures in favor of SLPP. Mm. And we have to accept it. Right. You don't do it. And I said, what is worrisome is that they did the same thing in Kabbalah, changing the figure from 69 to 169, and that again changed the reconciliation. Mm -hmm. And ideally, it should not be inputted. You see, it's very interesting when I hear Mr. Jones talking here about uh, the system that they have. If the thing is false, it will not be inputted. That is precisely what we told Neck in Medina. In, in, in Tom Colimba, mm -hmm. when we came for the Tallinn in Cambia. For about seven stations in Tom Colimba, the figures could not be reconciled because the number of ballot papers found in the ballot boxes exceeded the number of ballot papers issued. Right. And that excess is usually entered on the RR form in this category here, record discrepancies. Okay. That is where that figure is entered. You see here, mm -hmm. it is zero, zero, zero. There's so no it's discrepancy. Not captured, yeah. So if there's no discrepancy, according to this, zero, zero, zero. Mr. Jones, where did they manufacture the 100 from? You see, this is what so we are telling you. And if APC receives the 100 votes, okay. APC I, I, would no, win I, that election I'm going to, by 93 I'm going to all, all, votes. all of you, I see um, um, Lima is calling me. L let, me, let, me pick, let me pick his call and um, listen to... Um, the um, National Publicity Secretary of the SLPP, um, Lieutenant Lahai Lawrence Lima. Um, good evening and welcome to the show, Lima. Yeah, good evening, Samuel. You, Esther Glass. 
All right. Um, I know you. I'm very sorry. I am trying to really catch up with the program, but I'm stuck up in traffic. I All right. Went on the platform. I'm coming from Kono, so sorry for not being on time. All right. Um, now there are concerns that um, the, 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 the blurry lines between having national um, governance, um, people who hold government, government positions, and also all party um, offices, um, that is creating some serious, serious concerns for elections. And um, now, for example, you have the SLPP as a ruling party contesting an election in Koinadugu, and you have Nek, who has been accused of playing with the figures in favor of the SLPP. And to a point, you are, you are given a victory you do not deserve as a party. Where does that put the SLPP? Well, um, initially, when you invited me on your program, I told you the agenda of the APC. <laughs> that the agenda first was to intimidate areas they knew. Of course, we had, I mean, we have popularity and we can win elections. They intimidated. They entered into the elections with violence, pre-violence, violence on polling day, and violence post-pulling. Now, we move from there, even at the Tallinn Centre, they disrupted the process because of what they had done. When they, in, when, they in, when, they, when they perpetrated violence, they had the opportunity after they have recruited people who are their party stalwarts as NEC officials. That is why, as a party, we have taken a position for us to write to NEC as to how did they even arrive at the decision of employing people who are APC stalwarts as members of NEC to, part, I mean, to participate or conduct elections. Mm. Now, the APC entered into the elections with a strategy of violence so that they could give the opportunity to their operatives to, 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 to tamper with the documents and falsify the process and then blackmail NEC. That is exactly the agenda they are portraying. Now, on, the rate, on, um, can, can on your I, televisions, when I came on that day, I told you that I was not there, but from all that has been presented that we have seen, that it is quite clear that the APC perpetrated violence to the full view of the public, and for which Marcella is talking, and she has been very economical with the truth, without bringing that fact out, when she's talking about Togri violence, she is even being, she is sorry to say that she's lying to even mention the political party that went with Togri to Koinadugu. She is very economical, but she's also been bold to mention um, um, who beat up a crippled, I mean, a disabled person, that is not to my knowledge. But when people like Dr. Richard Conte, Dr. Kelfala Mara, we are stopping votes, I mean, voting processes, getting people out of the hall. She's not talking about that. She's very economical with it. She's not coming clearly for the public to understand that clearly. And now let's come to the issue of uh, um, um, party stalwarts being ministers. Now, on the issue where you were saying ministers went at the polling and they were, they were, they were, they were doing stuff, it was Kelsala Mara, a former minister who is a flag bearer aspirant for the All People's Congress, who went and stopped voting process that he had got. No mandate, no right to stop voting. He's not a NEC official. He's not a public official. He is a former minister of government of the APC and is also an aspiring candidate for flag bearer of the APC. He went into the hall and stopped voting for more than one hour. And then the NEC, I mean the SLPP agents, were not pleased with the process. It's like they were being bullied by their talks. So they had to call on the Minister of Youth. The Minister of Youth went there and even instructed as a government authority that Kefala Mara, you have no business here, you have no business stopping pulling, go outside. So these are the things Matala should come out with. And in fact, that issue was cleared up by his PRO on 98.1. But well, she's been very economical with that truth. Coming on when the you issue say... where he said political parties, um, I mean, um, stalwarts are holding government ministers' position, Matala should be really clear on the fact that, firstly, I'm a member of a political party. That one is quite clear. At the same time, there is no law in this nation that is impeding me that because I'm a member of a political party as a citizen, I am not entitled to hold a government position. What would Marcella, what would Marcella say if I'm a government minister? So should I not take any position in my church? If I'm in my church, I'm a member of the Young Adult Association. If they make me secretary general, because I am a government minister, I should not hold a position in my church. So it doesn't count. It doesn't add up. What, what if I would tell Marcella yeah. that her husband and Let husband me ask you is this an question. APC member? Let and the advocacy she is putting up it is because her husband is a member of the APC. That is why she's putting Let me up ask, advocacy. Let me APC. ask you this question. Let me ask. If you are a civil society organization member, when you are coming up to really arbitrate or to give out your view to issues, you should be seen completely neutral and bring out the issues as dispassionately 
let me uh, let me ask it's you this question, Lima. And, and, and Lima. Lima. Let me ask you yeah. this. Let me ask you this question. In your submission, you said um, you're quite clear that NEC recruited people who are said to be APC members. Um, there. But again, in, at the same time, um, APC is blackmailing NEC, and you've written to NEC to clearly explain how did they arrive at recruiting APC members as staff. Uh, does that not still question um, the credibility of NEC, which APC is also questioning here? Well, I am glad that Mr. Jones mentioned the fact that they are going to conduct audits on how they employed certain members of NEC, because one, they will call for suitable serial unions. They will not know who, are, who, who is who and who is who. So we want to know how did they arrive at employing APC staffs. Now, coming on the issues, the figures, uh, uh, Dr. Richard Contest is informing the public with. I told you in the first place that APC had a fictitious figure in their hands to blackmail the process and make NEC a government institution look bad. But that's not what I'm not holding brief for NEC. What is clear here is the fact that Dr. Richard Conte and I, we are comfortably sitting in the hall when they were, um, I mean, tallying the, the results of the chairmanship, even though in areas like uh, Kamuke, in places like uh, uh, Fadugu, in places like Warawara Yagala, where they had beaten our pulling agents, and in, where police were not there, they beat our pulling agents, they got them out of the center by their talks, and to the extent that they did whatever they could, and we sat in that hall, the results we are inflating in their favor, elections that we are supposed to have even won, Elections, I mean, results we are inflating in their favor. We sat there calmly. We were even cracking jokes. We came to the uh, uh, um, elections of the world. And then they, started, they were leading us at some point. We led them at some point. And the final analysis, we emerged victorious. And then Kefala Mara wanted to take his victorious, I mean, his fictitious figure to the neck. I said, no, you don't move towards the table of the commissioner if he does not approve. And he has told us that they are going to announce provisional results. If you have issues, you raise the issues. Now, if those issues are not taken on board, you write to NEC, they will look into your concerns. So he was, he was about to move towards the um, 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 electoral commissioner in a very desperate and angry mood. I said, don't come and sit down and make your point. If you have any issue, these are fictitious results you've made up. You did not raise these issues when you were in the hall. These results have slept with you for more than two days. What you have does not tell with what we have. So if you're making a point, make your point to the NEC official. If they take it, fine. If they do not take it, go and do a formal write-up and send it to NEC. But what I will conclude on that issue, I would say that NEC should conduct an internal audit on the issue to investigate even the vote, how many votes, how many ballots we are casted, so that we know exactly, other than coming to misinform the public about the fictitious list they have made, because APC is known for vote rigging. So because they are very notorious for vote rigging, what they were doing when they were in governance, they are assuming that that is the same. Of course, if we would have been APC in governance, SRPP was not going to win so, um, chairmanship. But we have told them we are transparent to the process. We will allow in the, uh, independent democratic institutions to work. So, so what you are saying, in, of government officials. in essence, what you are submitting to us, that all the problems that occurred at Koinadugu were perpetrated just by the APC. By the APC, Dr. Rita Conte on that hall was, was, was clearly seen taking talks around perpetrating violence on people. Yes, Dr. Rita Conte, uh, including Dr. Kefala Mara, and also there is one Captain SS Mara. But I would say for certain that that was a failure on the part of the police uh, command structure that was present, because honestly, I will not be there as a government minister that supervises the police and then seeing attitude or conduct of that nature is going disturbing the peace of peaceful Sierra Leoneans within that district and it's not taken care of by the police. So that's an unfortunate part, but that will be addressed. And I'm sure going into and any subsequent election, such will not repeat itself. And, and I want to take you on that. Um, let's go by what you're saying. The APC is to be blamed. The APC is solely responsible for all the problems in the Koinadugu um, by-elections. But Marcella is very disturbed, going by the fact that um, since all of those things happened, the police force has not come out with a single statement even to reassure or assure the public that they are going to investigate, I mean, the APC people who perpetrated the violence, in your words, if we are to go by that. Well, um, when issues happen, the, um, the police is a professional body. First of all, they have to examine the situations and see where investigations need to be conducted because this is a dicey issue. You don't want to come out for it to appear as if you want to 
intimidate certain class of people. So they have to study the, 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 the whole process and look at where it, where it went wrong, whether it was a failure. Of course, that has come out very clearly that it was a failure on the command structure on the ground. And so that has to be audited, and we know exactly why was that, was that a failure. Why was that? Was there a, a, a total assessment? How many police stations have we established? Was that communicated to the police, co police command structure? Do we are they aware of how many command stations, how many police personnel right? the police pro personnel provided for, the, for, for, for manning those stations? We are they overpowered by those talks who went on the ground? All of those things have to be examined before the police come out with an official statement as to what the position of the police is. But as I'm saying, that those things will for every, any subsequent election we'll be having, if you have no business in that particular locality for certain, except you are accredited by NEC, that you are going to represent your political party, but if you have no business going there, for certain you will not be allowed to go there. Any security personnel that will allow anybody to go to any pooling environment that has got no business to, to do there, that security personnel must say over to his, to his job. This is no threat, but certainly we have to uphold the credibility and integrity of institutions that we are under oath to serve the people of this country. That is what we are saying. And so we would examine, we would allow the police to command their own assessment set and send the report and we'll examine that and see what strategic measures we'll come up with to, um, uh, uh, um, and to prevent recurrence of what happened. In such situations where Dr. Rita Conte, who is one of the leading perpetrators of violence to intimidate our voters, who is now blackmailing state institutions. But that is not what we are looking at. We have called even NEC to nullify the entire process itself because, one, it was marked by violence, intimidation to such an extent that they had their way to do exactly what they did and they want to take credit for the, for, 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 for the wrong things they've done. And that is why we are saying that we have complained to NEC. You know, it's sometimes we restrain because... You cannot be in governance and then you are, ready, you, are, you are complaining because in the first place we should have been able to ensure that that place is properly secure and manned. These are the reasons why we have been restraining. However, this is not to say we will allow um, 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 I mean, the wrong things to happen with an impunity. So that is why we have raised the issues with NEC to conduct an internal audit in the process. Right. And where it's necessary for the, the, the electoral commission to nullify the entire process, let it be nullified, we go back to the drawing board and get it right. So okay. that institutions will stand up tall because they are very critical to the survival of our democracy. So if we have one political institution blackmailing those state institutions, it is more proper that we go into the intertoes to get it right so that the credibility of those institutions are preserved for the good of the nation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, follow the show as you uh, um, if there is need for us to have you, then we'll definitely bring you in the conversation um, by Lawrence Lima. I mean, quite interesting submission there. Um, Marcella, so 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 <laughs> the SLPP is saying <laughs> all the problems, all the, the incidents of violence there in Koina Dugu were perpetrated by the APC, and everything was okay. I mean, this is just a ploy. I mean, it was premeditated, it was well, I mean, orchestrated by the APC, and here we are now blaming NEC because, I mean, in the words of Lima, this is a blackmail to so state institutions. We are really in a quagmire in this country. After the submission of the deputy minister, I just said to myself, this is the most disturbing period in our history. Mm. A whole government minister, a deputy minister, making that submission on a national and by extension international media. Mm. Let me say to Lima, right? that he has no business to intimidate me. Come to the mic and intimidate me. He has no business to do that. And let him know, let it go on record that I am not intimidated. So all the undertones that he made, I will give it to him, right? Let him take that. But I want to say that elections is not the business of governments. Government only supports elections. Elections is a citizen. I wanted to allow the National Electoral Commission to lay the parameters in this matter and come up with a principle. I never wanted to catalog all the evidence in the field. Mm -hmm. I never wanted to go to the debased issues of violence and the violence that we are perpetrated. Mm -hmm. That is not part of electoral discussion. Those are worst incidents that we should not be proud of as a country. And if that is perpetrated
created by a government in power, how can you take your own hands to destroy the peace of this country? And now he has the effrontery and the audacity to come to the media to intimidate me. We are an organization of 400 civil society organizations. And let him know, I wish he was in the studio, so I address him directly. And let him know and let him hear this very, very well, that we are not going to stand this. We are not going to stand this. Let them know that when we go to the polling station, we go to observe NEC, and we are not going to observe political party and their misconduct. That is why I never wanted to comment on that, because it's outside the rubrics of the game. It's outside the rules, and it's left with the police to discipline them accordingly. But how can the police discipline a sitting government? We are two ministers. A sitting minister and a deputy minister went to the polling station to fight. How can the police take action? Now he's coming on national media and intimidating people. What do you think? I think the minister should understand what this means and the ramification for our democracy. There are two issues here, blatant uh, 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 um, destruction of ballot papers and materials. That has been recorded in the full view of people in constituency 110. A minister was seen with a ballot box wrestling with it. Now the same thing, a minister, two ministers are fought in the polling station. Now we are trying to establish who burns the ballot papers and he's talking to off. He's talking to us. In any decent democracy, these people would have stood down. And if he continues in this action, we will call for his resignation with immediate effect. All right. So he cannot threaten any civil society. Let him know that, that this democracy, we are moral guarantors. That civil society fought for it. Some of our colleagues died in the process. They Thank led their lives for this process. So he cannot come here and start talking to us after they have could, I mean, because all the problems in Koinadugu, we have all the records of what transpired in Koinadugu. By this time, I tell you, those who are supposed to be arrested by the police, they are not arrested. Why? Let the ordinary right. citizens understand why are they not arrested. All right. let, let, we let, have called for their arrest. We have called for the arrest of the officials. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, the official at the National Electoral Commission to investigate because we are also worried that citizens have taken to social media to share his picture. That should not be the case. The proper, it should go through the proper rubrics of the law. All right. So when we are calling for these things, it cannot come to public media and start intimidating people. And I do hope, and I do hope that those in government had him well and the threatening remarks he is making to police officers, he has no business in elections. All right. Relax, Marcella. Let me just quickly bring in um, Dr. Dr. Conte. Dr. Conte, the question I want to ask you is, um, you, you're afraid that um, the, what happened at, um, at Kabbalah, in Kona, the Konadugu um, election, is something you've referred to, it's, it's institutionalized, because yes. it was repeated here in Freetown. Yes. So, so where does that leave your party? Well, I mean, one of the two major parties that, 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 the, that have always con I mean, contested these elections. Yeah, before I answer that question specifically, I would want to state that I sincerely would not dignify Lyle or Eslema with a response. Uh, that he can come on international media and indict himself in the way he has just indicted himself, I rest my case. But I believe that as APC, we know that NEW is an independent civil society institution they submitted their reports, and we know the people that they indicted in their report. And I'm happy, she says, they have data to back up their claims. I also know that there are videos that show precisely what happened. And I know that Mr. Jones here was a photographer, religiously recording everything that transpired. Mm -hmm. So I hope that as part of their investigations, mm. they would make public the recordings which they have of everything that transpired in Kabbalah. So that the people of this country would know. You see, this idea of misinforming the public is part of the problem. We in the APC know that we are at the point of Talain. And at the point of Talain, we are talking about Talain, the results. Mm. As 
based upon how the people voted. And what we have presented here are clear cases of electoral fraud. And we are saying that the NEC officials have no business changing the figures mm. and adding a hundred votes to a particular candidate. That, the little I know about elections is that that does not constitute reconciliation. When you are reconciling, mm. you don't tamper with the individual scores of the candidates. And I'm sure Mr. Jones knows that, and he should not be saying that here. And what we are saying for Ward 155 specifically is that the score of 83 and, that, and 49 mm. is consistent and it, it, with what should normally be reconciled. And mm. the reconciliation on that particular ballot paper is very, I mean, our form is very clear. And so they had no business changing it. And we are saying that because they altered that figure and gave SLPP an extra 100 votes that they did not deserve, that means that is why they are now saying that SLPP won by seven votes. APC actually won by, a hundred, uh, by 93 votes. Mm. And the worrisome thing here is that if this trend, because it's not a trend, it happened in Kabbalah, it happened in, in Freetown. And if I can draw uh, uh, inferences mm. from it, I can safely say it's likely that it happened before. Maybe we are not just as vigilant before as we were in this case. And what that means, therefore, is that it does not really matter how people vote. In it's the neck that decides. It's is neck that decides. Mm. They are like, 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 like Stalin, uh, say, uh, the Russian leader said, it's not really about how people vote. It's about who counts. And that is what precisely NEC is trying to do here. Because they are the ones that count. They are the ones that do the inputting. Then it means they will decide who wins. And that is worrisome. All right. That is the greatest threat that can be posed to our democracy in this country. And we, as APC, have decided that this time we will not take it. We are going to resist it. We are going to court. And beyond that, we would be evaluating our options as we progress. All right. But we think that if we allow this to continue, then we, we are making the entire future electoral process fait accompli. It will be of no consequence. And we don't think that it is in our best interest and in the interest of our country to allow this to continue unchecked. So, so Christopher, this is crit um, very critical and crucial. Um, if NEC decides today who wins and who loses um, an election from your office, th that, that, that speaks a lot to your credibility, trust and confidence from the people you are there to ensure that you organize or conduct elections for. And Marcella, in, in our words, I mean, th that is because election it's about the people. The people make the decision. And so when the people speak, you just have to give that voice out. But if you're changing things and you want to give whoever you feel like giving according to um, the submission here, does that not put the 2023 election already into jeopardy? Dr. Richard knows what he's saying is not correct. Let him go back to parliament and see how many parliamentarians he has. Next decides that, who goes to parliament. How many parliamentarians are there for APC? We continue to do our job with honesty and sincerity. But let me go back to the area of reconciliation. I don't want to be misquoted after I've left the studio. I said, when you breach reconciliation, or rather, reconciliation should not alter vote cast for a candidate. Thank you very much. So I said, because, because somebody <laughs> breached, let me come, let me come, mm -hmm. let me come, let me lay it clearly than before. Because somebody breached the consideration process, that was why he was asked to stand aside. And that's criminal. That's not criminal, look. 
Look, allow me to explain to the viewers. You were there. You have got your tongue. Let me explain. That's not criminal. Mm -hmm. If it is criminal, the neck staff should not have assigned his signature to what he changed. The changes for reconciliation should be at the bottom of the reform, and not at the top. Mm. Because it was done, so the commissioner ordered him to stand aside. So you still hold on to the fact that the numbers were not changed in favor of, of a particular party he of candidates? He breached the staff of neck, <laughs> breached reconciliation procedure. Right. There's a space at the bottom for you to reconcile. Mm. But if you fail to put it there, you put it up for vote cast, for a candidate, you have breached the procedure. Right. That is why the commission has warrant an independent investigation. Mm. Four senior staff are investigating the whole issue. And, and, uh, and the allegation is that it did not only happen in Kabbalah. It happened here in Freetown. So, it, so for them, that, uh, for the APC, it's, it's like this is something you've planned. This is something you've, you've arranged. This is something NEC has... I mean, as strategically put, no matter what, we're going to get that, get that, and we have to be consistent. If we have getting. planned that, then why do we call for election? Why do we ask them to send in and those candidates? We have a pending election for Kenema. We have a pending election for Kono. And I've received from APC, they are contested candidates. Mm -hmm. And we are going there. APC has nothing to do but to support NEC, because NEC is the only credible body in the constitution that has the power to conduct all elections and referendum. Mm. So whatever they say to us, the letter they have received, we have received, queries will be looked into. And we have areas where we can sit down and discuss it. So what are the plans now to ensure that you're able so, to, 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 to put that trust, that confidence, your credibility um, at the pinnacle for them to be able to look at NEC as a credible institution? You know, those who play football, they always grumble about the, the <laughs> attitude and behavior of the referee. But they do not quit the, the football pitch. APC has nothing to do but to still continue to contest. And we ensure, either in a meeting, tripartite meeting, or PPLC meeting, but we also we will make sure right. that we address their queries, their issues that they have raised, and also for SAPP. Because without political parties, we don't have a job. It's only when they contest, then we have a job. Mm. So we will take their queries and their letter of protest very serious. But how come did you recruit APC people to work at um, Koenadugan, if we were to go by Why the allegation wait for of, the investigation? Of Why don't you wait for the investigation? That's what he has said. It's an allegation he has made. But that is why the Chief Electoral Commissioner, Mohamed K. Kone, has wanted investigation. We'll do all of that. So whatever somebody say now, it might be an allegation. <laughs> Let me take this one again, please. Um, Dr. Ichakonte said next decides who, who wins the election. No, 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 no. No, no. It is the same neck during the tenor of APC. It is the same neck. Nothing changes. The only thing that changed is when you bring in um, the, the commissioner, the CC. Mm -hmm. But we were there, and we are there, and we continue to be there. But we will show, we will make sure we do our job with integrity. So please, the point is very, very clear. So far, I've made it very clear and transparent. We continue to do our job, mm -hmm. and we encourage new. We have, we have what we call MOU, but we are not receiving reports from new after every election. But mm. family it's press release over the, over, the, over, the, over the radio. When you do an election, according to the law, mm. in the Public Elections Act, after election, you do write a report to the commission. So the commission will look at lapses. Who serves as conducted this election are Sierra Unions. The police staff are from Kornadugu. They are not from Guinea. Uh, brothers and sisters that are educated in Sierra Leone school on our free quality education. So we are going to look into that. But we also want to make sure that NEC, that new, sorry, send in a report after observing election. So we can look at their report before coming out to the public. Mm -hmm. We are not afraid of anything. We don't want to hide anything under the carpet. But the procedure calls for. We have an MOU with them. And we do our credit new. And we say to, Michael, to Marcel and, and the others, keep on your job. But please send us your report after election. Interesting. Marcel, I will give you I will give you a minute to respond to why you're not sending in your report to me. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> she knows that. Times. <laughs> <laughs> you will never receive a report from me. Since 2002. No, but how, how can you say that, Mr. <laughs> when I do what about when, when I do when, when report. Uh, about, about a month ago. Can I do oh, go? Excuse me, excuse me. About a month ago. 
you invited us to a national workshop yeah. you have where a, we are we are looking a, at the a, recommendations. A recommendations. Yes. Legal reform yes. process. Yes. Exactly. Where we are looking at recommendations yes. from the reports yes. of it's elections like observers. Me. Yes. And you those observers me. include me. new. New. Okay. So yes. if you are saying that is for that was for general election. That is my duty. Gentlemen, gentlemen. For every by election, election is election. For every by election, we expect new to send a report. General election, we receive report from new, and the recommendation made by new, we have looked into it. Okay. So we need to bring in. We need to bring in our views. After every by election, we will look it as strength and weaknesses. So far, we need to bring in our views. That's what we expect to do, Masela. A minute to respond quickly. We need to bring in our views. It's getting really interesting these days. Well, Since 2002, every other person knows that new signature outreach, it's, it's, it's press release, a comprehensive report comes after. To next. And they know, they know that. To next. So I am really disappointed. To next. Honestly, but, excuse me, Mr. Jones. Yes, please. Right? I am really disappointed that you can make this statement in public. As if new is not sending reports. It's not no. you know, let's see. For by elections. Just, I'm referring to for okay. by let, elections. Let, 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 Please go, go ahead, on. Go ahead. Go ahead, Marcella. Go on. Please it's go so ahead. Right? For every election, right? Our signature is a press release to report because we are observing as citizens. So we report back to the citizens okay. to say what transpired. Now we have called Nick out. That they need to take immediate step to rebrand themselves. You know the implications of elections for peace and security? Yes. It's very, very much important. Yes. And that is why we believe when I came to the studio this evening, I made it clear. I do not even want to go to the violence of the two parties right. because violence is not part of elections. And I think the media must know this also. The media must know this, and whenever these two parties fight, they need to be blanked from the media and let them go and reflect, because violence is not part of elections. I came to the studio mm -hmm. to encourage the National Electoral Commission, because we monitor their process, mm -hmm. to ensure a materials available, we are certain groups of people disproportionately excluded from the process, we are, we are the votes counted in the polling station, in the final analysis, we are they done according to national and international standards. In the final analysis, we say the elections were peaceful, they were well organized, they were conducted within the standard. We got to observe what they do. We okay. don't go to observe political parties. Sure. And so in the final analysis, if we have a situation where there are discrepancies, right? He knows the collation, when you, sorry, the, 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 the results reconciliation form, yes. the way it is ordered. The, f the figures, the figures and the reconciliation, they are not in the same portion. No. You d exactly. So you know, I know. All right. So in the final analysis, right, we also need to stand by our commission, the National Electoral Commission, because mm -hmm. in the face of these political parties, we do not want any one political party to capture neck. We don't want that. All right. And if we want to stand by a commission, we can only stand by them when integrity is at stake. And we can vow for them that they can deliver on their responsibility. But then if integrity is online, we can only call on them to come and clear their name. And whosoever orchestrated that, they bring it to the fore. Mm -hmm. So to come to the public, so make a statement about news reports as if it's news reports that it's in dispute. Oh. I don't think right. that is the relationship between you and it. All right, let's of bring all the observer. Just a minute, uh, quickly, uh, um, Samuel. Mm -hmm. Of all the observer groups that you accredited for 2018 election, no local observation outfit has the report. Our report was internationally certified, and that is what we are using for the electoral reforms. So this, sure. sometimes we just need to be honest. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's bring in our viewers. Let's relax. Let's bring in our viewers. Um, the number is 030 622766 030 Good evening, AYVM Sunday. Good evening. Please move away from your TV or radio set, please. I'm sorry about that. Go ahead. It's unfortunate that Mr. Salima is not um, here to me right now. Because I want to tell him that the women of Sierra Leone are strongly behind the issue Madam Matela is raising. He has no right to point finger at her husband being 
discussing here and putting there. Looking at the head, the issues, and the flow. That's one. Two. He's talking about next, um, looking into the, his, their staff and all the rest of it. Let, him, let me tell him that 2005, I was at Jalai University College. Mr. Edmund Apple was there, um, Professor Mane, and somebody from statistics were dancing to Wu Tete. When was he employed at, at NEC? Now he's pointing finger at APC being employing this and that and that and that. Let's address issues, please. Thank I'm you. I'm so mad at him right now. Thank you. You can tell by the way I'm speaking. And let me tell you something. I have a daughter sitting with me now. She's um, in the of isolated issues. When public um, people in the governance do uh, economical with tools, she has added Mr. Jones to the number. What are we teaching our youngsters? What right. example is SFPP living with or giving to our youngsters? All right, I'm going to hold you there. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to give a minute each to a caller, please. Good evening, AYV on Sunday. Good evening, Samuel. This is um, Peter on from Australia. Go ahead. I am just ringing to um, excuse my one minute to comment on what's going on in uh, Kwanabibu district by elections. I think um, I want to thank all the contributors, the panelists there. But I think the focus, their focus is on the symptoms as opposed to what the issue is. Um, when you have, when you get uh, malaria, you know, we just focus on the, the that. You will focus on several other undertones. You see, there has been series of systemic failures, series of um, uh, uh, compromised institutions in our country. And this has been demonstrated over the past years. When APC is in power, the same thing that SLPP is doing now is what APC was doing. You know, and APC will compromise, all the elections will be compromised in their favor. SLPP, all the elections at the moment have been compromised in their favor. We can see that. We've seen that in, in 110 hours in here. We've seen that um, in several other parts of the country. So this is something that we need to go deeper. We need to look at the institution, the independence of the institutions, as opposed to what is happening now. That okay. is what I want to draw. That is what I want to draw the attention. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, AYV on Sunday. Yes, uh, Mr. Samuel. Good evening. Go ahead, sir. Um, this is a laudable uh, program we are having this evening. Um, first of all, I was expecting you to have checked Lima when he mentioned. Uh, Marcella's husband into the issue. This is, um, it, it, it is not done. For instance, if I'm making a point and I decide to 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 attack Lima and 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 his fiance or wife, you will check me. You know. So l let learn to stick on the rules. But it is clear that um, the whole issue in Kabbalah is marred by uh, 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 election malpractice and and so on. I am of the conviction that this is the same system they use to win the election of which Lima is benefiting, uh, benefiting now from today. So what I want the APC to learn from this now is that you should be vigilant. You should not leave party uh, 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 um, agents to the school boys. Some of you are out of job now. I think you have all the time. When, when there is any election somewhere, you take your time to go there. And represent yourself well. Marcella, we will stand behind you. Right. No one will trust you in this country. Thank you. Not even Lima will dare to, to, to venture that. Thank we'll you. We stand against anyone who will dare to judge any uh, um, uh, activist. We know the NGOs. We Thank know the NGOs. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very support. much. We do not have time, I'm afraid. Good evening, AYV on Sunday. Good evening. L Lima was supposed to be here. I'm sorry, Marcella. Go ahead. Lan Lamin Samu Akoyato. Go ahead. Yes. We expect to have credible institutions. Institutions that are free from political intimidations. Because all what we are seeing in this country, institutions are supportive of the government of the day. And that is not what we want. We want independent institutions. Why should we be working in favor of politicians? We know 
what politicians had led this country to. And so our only hope is for institutions to be independent, institutions that will stand the test of time, institutions that will not be allowed, that will not allow themselves to be used by politicians. You are the professionals here. I'm talking of neck. Why are you going politics? Because clearly from what Jose is saying, he's making us more confused that means than even trying to explain better to us. I find it so difficult to understand what Mr. Jones is saying. Right. Somebody has done the wrong thing and you are defending that no, this is not wrong, it is this, it is that. Thank I you. Not, I have not understand what he said. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, AYV on Sunday. We're going to accommodate uh, at most um, five more calls. Um, good evening, AYV on Sunday. Please be audible. Good evening, Tony White. Go ahead. Yeah, this is something. Yeah, um, what I want to say here is that um, you really need to um, continue your night job. Please be audible. We're not I getting know. you. Are you hearing me now? Go ahead. Yes, I say I always like your job, but um, today, sincerely, you allow the minister to talk against the woman who is always with her life for the democracy of our land. So please, for my own contribution, you always learn and try to expect those who you have on the studio, especially that are under your supervision. We know that um, ATC is already winning that election. The man in the studio don't want to say the truth. And kudos to Richard Conte. God bless you. That's my contribution. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, good evening. Good evening. Hi. Go ahead. We're getting you Hello. loud and clear. Yes, please. Oh, yeah. Is this AYV? Yes, this is AYV. Yes, yes. Um. So my, my yes, my my. I I want to talk directly. Yes, yes. Thank you. I want to talk directly to the NEC official. Um. I think I I think the NEC official should they should they should. Okay. Um, good evening, AYV on Sunday. Yeah. Um, we're having a table reception there. Um, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Yeah. Stay away from your TV or radio set, please. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's really disappointing. All right, I'm going to drop your call, please. Hello. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Yes, um, Samuel. This is Mike Dibu. They come from Charlotte. Right. Yes, uh, yes. I just say we, every gentleman, Lima, the statement we make. You know, we get for respect people in privacy. That is the go under the capacity as a civil um, um, activist. So, any two they do and they talk, they for do it in that. So, we don't need for the attack people in, in private life. So, I think he orally did an apology. And we all frown at him, and we expect much from him. And secondly, to Mr. Jones again, with the media, I think in the communication side, there are times we get for speak the truth, they don't mean anything, and say, yes, this is not correct. For let it ask figure, and they totally, it's criminal. So there is no way around it. You know, fine for all they use too much word for fine quotes and all. You know, fine, because this society needs for transform. So if they don't make mistake, let them left for the confuse people by way of using word they make and fight you know. it's wrong it's criminal Thank so you. it's not about party line right yeah. so this thing is wrong and they need to accept and take responsibility and we will continue for respect neck for that thank and you again, at the only institution thank you for thank you day. thank yeah? you thank okay. you yeah. okay last caller for tonight um good evening hey, why you sorry yes, good evening Samuel. uh thanks for the opportunity go ahead uh, um I want to admonish Mr. Jones. He's a very young man and he has a long way to go. If you work for public institutions and you are here de deliberately trying to lie for those institutions, what they are discussing is already in the public domain. You only have to maintain your integrity. If I work for a public institution and they expect me to lie and put my integrity on the line, I will resign that job. And that's exactly what Mr. Jones should, should do. And I know uh, uh, the, the Chief Electoral Commissioner is listening. My message to him is that you have an integrity on the line. This is just a small by election that is less than one year of, of tenure. Why must you bring your reputation or add a reputation on, on the line? 
what the reconciliation from uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Conte did there, all the figures reconciled. Let us ask Mr. Jones to reconcile 161 and 83 plus balance cast, balance return, void votes, and see if, the, or if, those, if those figures will reconcile. Let them stop, let, let them stop this. And the, and the danger is, if politicians rely on institutions to change balance for them, that's why they, this government is not working. Right. Because they know they have their people at neck. So no, who, who, will, who will give them a, a victory, even if they lose the election? All right. And this is bad. Thank and at you. the end of the day, it is us, the people, who lose. We let politicians into, into office to work for us. But if they rely in, in, in a backdoor way to gain victory, they will come and be complacent. They will not Thank you. for us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you very much. And um, we'll have to hold the messages there. We have so many calls right now from the U.S. Unfortunately, time will not permit uh, me to be picking more calls. I'm sorry. Um, time is never our best friend. Um, I see the boss. You have to take, you have to take water. <laughs> Drink water and relax. You're okay. <laughs> All right. Um, basically, we, we've listened to the callers. And again, we have um, close to a thousand Really? messages that I cannot make an attempt to even go through any on my Facebook page right now because uh, <laughs> it's going to it's going to be crazy for me so we'll have to only there up to now colors are still <laughs> cool that tells you I mean the, the, the interest of the, the, the conversation but we've listened to civil unions and um, they've made their, they've they've made their, their submissions and still it speaks to the the credibility of NEC as an institution. It speaks to um, public of, um, officers playing politics and killing democracy. So I, I, in all of these, uh, uh, as, as, what would you want to put as a informative way forward to ensuring that we're able to, to refine our path and work towards um, democracy with integrity and credibility? There are two issues I want to put on the table. Ultimately, the, your question is the second one. Right. But the first one is the issue of the attack on my personality. And I want to say a number of callers raised that, and you're right. skillfully turning around that aspect. But I want to say to Sierra Leoneans and those um, in, the, in the international space listening to this, mm. to understand the dynamics of women's involvement in issues like this. You see, whenever women are in spaces dominated by men, and when they have no issues to talk about, they start attacking your personality. They go to name calling mm -hmm. and slut shaming. So if I was in the studio and I was single, I'm not married, right. the minister would have said, oh, look at her sitting there, she's not married. That's, all, that's what they do to women. Mm -hmm. So he has just exhibited that. And you know, I mean, I owe no qualms around right. this because women have been suffering from this toxicity on and on. So it's very important that we get to realize this and that will not stop me from talking. It will not stop me from talking. This is what I do through and through and I have done this over the years. When they have nothing to say about me, they've called me SLPP in this country, they've called me FPC, they've called me all sorts of names. When mm -hmm. they have nothing else to say, you have now, I am the one who is an activist. I am promoting democracy and citizens' participation. Why do you bring somebody else into this conversation? It is not done and it is unacceptable. Having laid that foundation, I would now go to the issue proper. Mm -hmm. Now, the deputy minister was representing the, all, uh, um, the Sierra Leone People's, People's Party, Party at the Tally Center. That's a conflation of rules, and I made that very clear. Because he's the minister in charge of home affairs. And if an issue of this nature right, is on the table, they are the ones who should sit and see how, you know, if they are competent leaders to take us from the quagmire. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, he is implicated in the issue. And I made that very clear. I was at the Tale Center, and there are allegations of how the results, you know, the, the, the unequal power dynamics. It was at the Tale Center putting pressure that that result should be announced. And now, fighting shame is coming to the public. He has nothing to say, and he is attacking my personality. I, I mean, this is, this is not done, 
and it undermines the tenets of our democracy. So they must go back. And let me advise the Sierra Leone People's Party. Perhaps those who were at the Tale Center did not inform their members. They went to the Tale Center. They do not even have results reconciliation. They had no results reconciliation at the Tale Center. So they could not even checkmate what they went to the Tale Center for. All the reports that National Elections Watch have about the, 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 the atrocities and the violence in the fields are recorded by the SLPP. So instead of organizing, you know, to catalog their votes, they were organizing Togri. Mm. I never wanted to go into the violence because my issue was how to get neck to understand the sensitivity of what they are handling mm -hmm. so that we'll find the way forward. Right. Right? So I never wanted to go to the f um, violence, but this particular election, the record we have on the Sierra Leone People's Party mm -hmm. was disappointing and shameful. And the party officials must take immediate steps mm -hmm. to address some of these challenges that we have pointed out. Right. So the second issue, which is with the National Electoral Commission, it was right when he said we have a memorandum of understanding. And that memorandum of understanding gives the National um, Elections Watch unfettered access to next processes. That's why if we are talking about every of their processes, we are talking about it with precision because we can see right from the, the preparatory stages to, you know, mm -hmm. the announcements of the final results. But I think this particular situation is very ugly, I must say. It's, it, I mean, for me to even understand what would have warranted this situation, we need to understand the socio-political context. Mm. There are unequal power relationships in this context. Institutions cannot function independently. Mm. If the constitution continues to remain as it is, Right, an institution do not have the tenacity to be independent, it becomes a challenge for them to perform their roles independently. So those who are actually interested in political governance in this country must begin to call for constitutional review. So that institution, because when institution like the police is gone, is captured already, they are regime serving agencies over the years. <laughs> You know, poli the police has been implicated as they cannot act. Mm. So now, if institution at the National Electoral Commission is captured, it becomes very difficult for them to conduct free and fair elections. Right. So we need to pay attention to that. But notwithstanding, mm. right, this matter at hand, I would also recommend, and that's what we have recommended at National Elections Watch, they must take immediate steps, mm. you know, to investigate this issue. And I'm happy that the commission had put forward a panel to do this. Right. They must take immediate steps to investigate the issue. And the culprits should be, I mean, they should face the law. All right, Dr. Conte, yeah. what, what's next? I mean, you're now saying they've given your victory to someone else. Yeah, I, uh, let me just join others in condemning Lyle Lawrence Lema for the attack on Marcella. That was uncalled for, that was unwarranted, and uh, for that to come from a sitting minister, if, if it were in civilized societies, I'm sure he would be out of the job, out of a job by now. It should not happen, and I hope that he would do the right thing to apologize publicly to Marcella and uh, make sure We would have to get him again for a minute uh, or two. Let's see. Uh, to... This does not happen. Go ahead. Uh, I want it to also be known that the APC is not against NEC. Uh, you would even recall that in the letter we wrote to the Chairman of the Electoral Commission uh, requesting a reversal mm -hmm. of the uh, entry that was done in Freetown at Wellington, we commended the next staff, precisely the commissioner, Edmond Alpha. We commended him for the type of action, immediate action he took mm. in Kabbalah when he realized that it was wrong to change the figure from 69 to 169. He took immediate action and said that staff should be removed from the process and that that figure should be corrected. Mm. He also immediately gave the action to say all the four wrong entries should be corrected. We commended him. A whole paragraph mm -hmm. in our letter to the Chamber of Commission. We commended him. You know, we see NEC as partners. So what we expected, mm -hmm. therefore, was that the same posture 
which he had in Kabbalah, should have been the same posture which he should have taken here in Freetown. Because it was so blatant. It was so direct. But I'm sure uh, Mr. Jones, you know, when we were in Freetown, he was more of uh, uh, <laughs> the, the, a, 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 a waiter uh, <laughs> serving us food and drinks. So making you guys maybe comfortable. It, 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 making <laughs> us comfortable. So maybe he, he, he was not too uh, uh, familiar with the realities of what happened because this is a clear and straightforward thing. And that is why we have all the facts and we have presented our facts to NEC. Right. We believe that NEC has to see reason to come clear. And dragging this issue further will just compound the problem. It's a straightforward case. Okay. A straightforward case of a wrong entry. All right. Reverse it. Then investigate the systemic issues mm -hmm. that are rearing their ugly heads. Okay. And those ones would, would, would come out of a more detailed report. Mm. And we should not rush it okay. because we have to now take concrete steps because unfortunately all of these media houses are not social media and unfortunately the message that has gone out there is not very positive for NEC. So NEC needs to launder its image and quickly yeah. and I think taking quick fast decisions will be helpful. As all a right. party we are going back retroactively to review our systems, our processes, mm -hmm. and the way in which we approach NEC and approach electoral processes. Okay. And we will come back to the next elections better prepared than now. All Thank right. Um, um, we have Lilo and Slim again online. Um, good evening again. Yes, yeah, Samuel, good evening. Yeah, I'm sure you, fol you, you followed, the con I'm sure you followed the conversations and um, even from our viewers and listeners. Uh, Very well, so. Go ahead. Um, in the first place, I want to also appreciate the views of everyone. Of course, I am very certain that they responded based on what they understood. However, I want to state here categorically clear that I'm very proud of my analogy, and I owe no apology to Marcella. What I did was to clear to Marcella that there is no law impeding any political party member from um, accepting an appointment from His Excellency, the President, to serve the Republic. And quite clearly, I have been able to distinguish my job as a minister and also as a member of a political party executive. That is very clear. I, on, I only would have hoped if Marcella um, would have also raised this issue when Alpha Khan was the publicity section of the community and at the same time the government minister. The same goes for Cornelius Dibu. Now, my analogy was very clear. But we have never accused Marcella of uh, 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 advocacy. That because she's saying all of what she's saying, sometimes even they are not true, that we have never accused her of saying what she says. But, but she tonight, but tonight, tonight, yes, I, I know you're coming, we're running out of time. Tonight, yes. almost every um, caller that um, responded to the issue feel um, like you attack, you attack her personality. Why not talk to the issues? Why Marcella? I'm validated I Richard Conte also joined the wagons of the FPC members who we are condemning my actions. But I'm very proud of my actions. I am All a right. professional. Okay. I'm very clear in my, in, my, in, my, in, my, in my conscience and in my thoughts. Thank but we you. We have said as a party and as a government that next you conduct an internal audit into their process wherein we have to go to clear all this you. down. Go to the ballot. Thank you very much. The ballot physically. So whether, whether they are fictitious or not, let's go back to the ballot and count the ballot so we become very clear on those issues. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, we do not have time quickly. Christopher? Yes. Um, NEC has set up moving forward. We want to maintain our integrity. We want to maintain to be professionals. Mm. So because of that, there are so many things that we are looking at. Setting up the committee, co what commences tomorrow, terms of reference. They are also going to look at the reconciliation process. Who, who are those that will form part of the committee? The senior staff. At senior, NEC. At NEC. Exclusively NEC. Yes. Who is, is, Why not election body, um, observer, uh, observers body, no, bodies no, like, ne no, like new? NEC has, to um, new has made their own recommendation what they want us to do. Mm -hmm. They have recommended. So we are looking at it. So can NEC, can NEC really investigate itself yes. independently? Yes. We have a department called the ethics department. We can. We right. can. So we are looking at that. Looking at the reconciliation process. Mm -hmm. What goes wrong? We're also looking at the recruitment process. 
And if we find anything anybody NEC, wanting... NEC recruited those staff, and NEC is going to take a look at the recruitment process Why not? that it did. We don't have the capacity to do an election mm. all by ourselves, right? Yeah. So we are going to look into that. Mm. Whether we dis it was faulty, we have to look into that. And we're going to come out. We want to say here on behalf of NEC that the, our partners, the 17 political parties, and new who always serve as a domestic observer to fill in all police stations in all our elections that will continue to live up to our expectations, who continue to work with integrity, impartiality, and who continue to conduct elections that will be credible, mm. of which the results of every election will be accepted by the people. Right. And we have platform for discussions. Are you satisfied that yes. NEC is going to investigate itself? Mm. They first of all need to look inwards, but that doesn't preclude because the issues at hand are grave. Right. There are other institutions responsible for integrity in the state. Mm. There's the Anti-Corruption Commission. There are underlying issues of figure changing, which stands amounts it's to allegation of fraud, fraud. And also there is the Sierra Leone Police. So they need to look at themselves internally to see how they can promote ethical standards within their rank and files. Mm -hmm. But let me say, to um, the, the deputy minister, mm. Lyle Lawrence Lehman. This issue is not about Marcella. Don't find <laughs> a sport. Don't find a soft sport. You know I'm not a soft sport. This issue is not about Marcella. Marcella, Marcella, don't bring me into this conversation. We are discussing tough issues from National Elections Watch findings mm. to issues that emanated from the field from the National Electoral Commission. Don't discuss Marcella. I mean, there are lots of issues to discuss at hand. Talk about how you, as a government minister and your cohorts, who disturb the elections in Koinadugu, how are you going to clean yourself up and how are you going to present yourself as leaders with integrity, competent enough to manage Thank a state? You. This is not about Marcella. We are only bringing the issues to the fore. All right, and this is where we end tonight's program. We say thank you to all um, our guests for giving us their time and many thanks to all of you who contributed in one way or the other to make this a great program. And um, if you send your comments or questions on Facebook, thank you for being a part of the discussion. Unfortunately, we did not um, have time to go through those messages. And um, this has been AYV on Sunday. My name is Samuel Wise Bangura saying good night. And up next is our AYV Primetime News. <laughs>